Now I feel good. You know, uh, we're putting the finishing touches on camp now. We're getting the final spars in. So all the work is done. You know, we, we trained very hard for this fight. You know, I'm 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 focused. Uh, I left it all in the training room, and uh, here we are. You know, I leave uh, this time next week. I'll be in Mexico City, so it came pretty fast. Obviously, knowing that the first fight got cut short, what do you take from from the few rounds that you actually spent in that ring with Floyd? Uh, listen, I think you could, uh, you could take a lot from that fight. You know, it was a big moment. It was the biggest crowd I've ever fought in front of before. It was, uh, against a living legend and he came out with bad intentions, you know, caught me completely off guard. Uh, so the fact that I survived that night and, you know, I was able to work my way through that fight. Only, all you could do is learn from something like that, you know? So now I know what to expect. I didn't really know what to expect the first time around. You know, I was caught a little bit off guard. The moment was a little big. But, you know, I mentally prepared myself now for the last year of what to expect. And I've been training for this moment. So, you know, all I could do is show up and I'm, I'm going to fight as hard as I could fight. You're obviously, you're the bigger guy. You would think you're the stronger guy. Uh, having felt his power, the quickness, all that, John, do you feel like you can go in there and you can actually beat Floyd? Yeah, I mean, I, I really do. The improvements I made from last year up until now, as far as even mental, mentally, uh, it's I'm a whole new fighter, you know, and I still had those abilities last year. It was just sometimes you, you don't know what's, what kind of fight to expect and you think it's going to go one way and it goes another and you just have to make adjustments and, and, and work through it, you know. It was a big moment, like I said, and um, I, was a, I was quite a little off guard, you know, so... It, it was important to get that out of the way, and I'm blessed that I got another chance to do it again because now, like I said, I know what to expect. I'm, I'm going to be a little more comfortable, and I'm going to fight my fight. So let's go. You know, clearly, uh, and I wouldn't imagine that, you know, that, that a guy who's got a lot of fame, like that would, you know, that would do much to a guy who has obviously had a famous last night, last name your entire life. But at any yeah. point, did you like sort of pinch yourself while you were in there, John, and be like, I'm a, I'm across from Floyd Mayweather right now. As a guy who yeah, loves absolutely. boxing, you know, soon as we, soon as he got in the ring, and I was like, yeah. this is surreal. You know, this doesn't feel. <laughs> if you would have told me when I first started my mixed martial arts journey, like you know, 11 years ago, would I be fighting Floyd Mayweather 11 years yeah. later? I'd say you're crazy. In what video game? You know. <laughs> And it's a guy who I grew up, you know, idolizing yeah. as a fighter my whole life. Yeah. You know, I was a huge fan of Floyd my whole life. Uh, so it was really surreal. Like I said, it, it was weird. That was part of also the moment. You know, it was a big moment. Like you said as well, the fact that it was also Floyd, not so much yeah. for the amount of people that were there. Or it was Floyd and it was Floyd determined. You know, he wanted right. to put work in that night. He wanted to hurt me. And I was caught off guard a little bit. But you know what? We fought through it. Here we are. We live to fight another day. Do you anticipate, do you believe that he is going to take it uh, as seriously yeah. as he did the first time around, come in with those bad intentions once again? Yeah, I think even probably even more. Even more, you know, getting a little feel of him at the press conference, you know, he was annoyed. He, he was really annoyed. I, I felt his energy. And it's it's beyond the boxing fight. It's a boxing match, but it's I think it's between me and him as men. You know, it's, it's a little personal. And we want to settle this like men. You know, we want no interference, no nonsense that happened in the last fight. Just me and him, and and after it's done, we'll shake hands and we'll go our separate ways. I was just going to ask you that. Would you say, would you characterize it as having bad blood between one another the way the fight ended, or is is that sort of been talked about and put to bed, and now you guys are going in there as two boxers and, and you're going to fight, and, and you know, like you said, it ends when the bell ends. Yeah, you know, in, in the ring it's personal, you know, obviously yeah. between the two of us. But outside, no, I, I wish Floyd nothing but the best, you know. Uh Whatever he does with his life, that, that's his problem. But in the ring, it is personal, you know. He made it personal. I didn't make it personal. You know, he came out from the get-go of that first fight. He was on the verbal attack right away, you know. And, and Kenny Bayless had no problem with that whatsoever. It was when I started giving it back, it, it became a problem. So, listen, it is what it is. You know, it's not personal outside the ring. It's personal inside the ring. He could say whatever he wants to say. He's not going to snooker me again. You know, I know Floyd's training. I know he's going to come his best because he's a proud fighter. And I know he's going to try his best to knock me out. And I'm going to try my best to knock him out. When you picture, when you imagine how this unfolds, John, is there a way you see yourself winning? Is there a way you see the fight going? What, what happens when you play it out in your mind? 
I'm anticipating a dog fight this fight, you know, especially if he comes out the way he did the first fight. You know, I think I'm going to stay right in the pocket this time. And I'm going to give it as good as I could take it this time. So it's up to him. Maybe he'll move and be on his bike a little more. I don't I don't know. But I'm prepared, like I said, for, for anything. You know, the, the biggest advantage I have, and I'm sure he has, is I, I've seen him in the ring now. So I know what to expect. And I'm the type of fighter who I make adjustments week to week even, even day to day, you know, even sparring on Monday till yesterday. My sparring yesterday was far better than it was Monday because mentally I prepared what, you know, how that spar played out. That's just the type of fighter I am. So I know what to expect. I felt his punches. I seen his speed. You know, I I felt his his whole aura, you know. So you have to – the best thing that could have happened was this year layoff, you know. Yeah. The fight happened right after – they wanted to do this fight in August, immediately after the first fight. And right. the best thing that happened was this layoff because it gave me – a little bit of a chance to mature as a fighter and, and develop those skills that I need, you know, to put on a good show. I'll let you get out of here on this one, John. I know your grandfather could uh, appreciate a big show. What do you think he would have said about his grandson uh, in there fighting against Floyd Mayweather? I'm sure he would have got a kick out of it from the things my father told me about my father, you know, um, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, uh, he would have wanted to rip Floyd's head off, you know, and when he, when he, <laughs> when all that stuff's going down, but I'm sure he would admire my, my fighting spirit and my heart and appreciate the fact that, you know, I, I'm on the front lines for my name. You know, I'm fighting to get respect for my name and, and, and make a positive, you know, impact on my family. So I'm sure he could appreciate that. 